Ladies and gentlemen, His Honor, the Mayor of the City of Washington and the President of the United States. <laughs> Senator Stephen A. Douglas and Mrs. Lincoln. Terrified. Mary, I don't believe you. bad as an inaugural addresses go. Of course, some men have a natural gift for elevated language, some do not. He's all right in the rough and tumble of Western politicking, but there is uh, little grasp of the larger issues. Speech, Senator Sumner. Shameful. You'd take the South back, slaves and all. Anything to preserve the Union. Thank God they will not come. Thank God they will not come without a bloody war. Senator Chase. I'm John Hay. We met at Willard's. I'm Mr. Lincoln's secretary. Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Mr. Hay. Sir, may I have your permission to ask Miss Chase to dance? I believe the next is a Lancer's. Well, I do not dance myself, Mr. Hayes. Religious group. However, my daughter is free to do so. If she chooses. My father's appointment to Secretary of the Treasury. Miss Chase, we are dancing. Is it Mr. Seward's influence? Poor Abe is too weak to say him nay. Seward's been pulling the strings in Chicago. <laughs> I am not styled in that fashion. Turn to your left, Mrs. Lincoln. Oh, uh, why can't they let me alone? More Don's man? He wants $900 for gloves and a hose. Now, that can't be right. It just can't. For a year, they were so accommodating, and now they're all clawing at me for their money. I don't... I don't know what I'm going to do. I promise myself I will be prudent and thrifty, and they... I vow it is like strong drink. Well, have you spoken to Mr. Lincoln about... No, I can't. I, I cannot distress him now. At some time, you will have to... Not no, I don't want them. I can't do anything with them. I don't even know how much it all is. Whenever I try to do the sums, I'm afraid I will get the headache. You take them. Give the personal bills to Mr. Stoddard and the mansion accounts to me. Merry Christmas, Father. Merry Christmas. Oh, Joe, the tree's beautiful. 
No, 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 no. Those are from M. Gautier and they are very expensive. Let us save one for General McClellan, shall we? No. <laughs> Here, read the Washington Courier. There is a delightfully malicious cartoon in there about Mrs. Lincoln on one of her shopping sprees and poor Abe staggering under all of her parcels. Oh, <laughs> well, she is certainly staggering under unpaid bills. Well, Father, everyone is saying that it was she who sold the advance copy of the President's State of the Union message to the New York Herald. She would not. No, but she would show it to her friend, Mr. Wyckoff, who would. Well, I sympathize. I can't find enough money to pay for the war, let alone our private expenses. Oh, don't worry, Father. I shall marry a millionaire and solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, Miss Chase. Merry Christmas, Mr. Hay. Is the president coming tonight? Uh, no, I don't think so. Surely one lion is sufficient. General McClellan is coming, isn't he? <laughs> well, he returned our card, if the urgency of the war permits. Although I'm really not sure what he refers to, since he's been with the Army of the Potomac for six months now and has not done anything with it. Do you ever go to the theater? <laughs> Naturally. Whenever possible. What you mean is, will I go with you? Will you? <laughs> Will I? Miss Chase, <laughs> this is Meissenware, is it not? Governor Sprague, I didn't know you were a connoisseur of China. I have a soup son of knowledge. <laughs> I should like to know more. One day. Colin <laughs> is arriving. Comes the young Napoleon. General, General McClellan. I am here. So you are, General, unmistakably. Well, sir, I would say, if the only way I could save the Union would be to become dictator, and then, at the very moment of victory, die, I would do so. But, General, so far no one has offered you the dictatorship. Of course, Miss Chase. I was merely responding hypothetically to what the newspapers had been writing. Good evening, General. Yes, Mr. Um, hey. We were sorry the other night when you were indisposed. We are... uh, Mr. Lincoln and Mr. Seward and I waited in your parlor, and you sent down word to us that you had gone to bed. Yes. Well, there was some misunderstanding. I, I had not realized it was His Excellency. He comes to me so often without warning. I don't think he will do so again, sir. 